white. Right ball to Smith. Smith's in behind. Hopkins chasing. Shoot! And scores! Great ball again. Here we go! Lines it up. Hey, Welcome back to FB TV, part of the Football Brisbane Media Group. I'm Robert Blanche and we're here at Goodwin Park for this round 11. Video League clash between Olympic FC and Wolves FC. I'm joined by Football Brisbane media analyst Bobby Hamilton. Uh, Bobby, former Olympic coach, possibly in the future one day, maybe even a future Wolves coach. Um, comes with years of experience and uh, you know the local game probably better than everyone. What are you expecting from today's encounter? Well, the, uh, coming here today, the interesting thing is, as I've noticed, that there is a good surface of grass on the field, so it'll probably play quite well, which will suit both teams, because both teams are capable of getting the ball on the ground and knocking it around. I expect a close contest, for sure. It could go either way, really, knowing what the quality of Wolves' side is, and uh, being you know, very familiar with the Olympic players. I think they'll be, after the last performance, uh, I think the last performance away at Brisbane City, uh, they would have been really disappointed with that. So they, they'll be looking to get back on track today. Do you see the pace of um, Aochi and Kearns as a problem for Olympic? They've got good defenders, but not necessarily the quickest defence in the league. Oh, most definitely. I mean, th those two players you mentioned though, can cause problems for, for any team in the league. Uh, so Olympic's not going to be any different. They're going to have to be alert at the back. And I'm sure they will be because they've played Wolves uh, on numerous occasions and uh, they know the qualities of those two players. So, uh, you know, they'll be, they'll be keeping things tight and, and making sure that they don't get too much time on the ball. Do you see Dixie uh, changing anything up for this match or going as with a side as you'd expect to come out onto the park? Well, that's a difficult call because, some, you know, like, you know, sometimes what influences you to make changes is it's not just based on games alone, it's, it's uh, performance on, tra on training, how players are looking in training, are they sharp, are they, are they, do they need to be some positional changes to get the balance of the side right, so it's a difficult one for me to answer that, not being in the, in the loop, but uh, I'm sure Dixie uh, will know exactly what sort of formation he needs to put out to, to combat the, the threats of, of Wolves. OK, well, I suppose the only thing left to do is um, a prediction for half-time, if you're brave enough. Half-time, as I said, even over 90 minutes, uh, they won't, I don't think there'll be a lot in it, uh, to be honest. And uh, I, I would go, there's goals in both teams, so I, would, I, don't, I doubt very much if it would be nil-nil. I'd go 1-1 one, one at half-time. OK, there we have it. Uh, a 1-1 one, one at half-time. Can't see any reason to argue with that. This will be a cracking match of football. It's the last one of the weekend trilogy. And we'll join you back here at half-time for a round-up of the first half and our previews for the second one. Today's game ends a weekend full of big games and should continue the trend and see both sides playing for the win, with Wolves really playing a way-style football. Olympic FC coach Jim Ballas will be hoping the break has done his players all the good, and will be hoping they can go from playing good football to good football with results. He knows he has the quality, and on their day they are a match for anybody. They will, of course, have to be on their best for the whole 90 to take the prize here today. Wolves FC coach Sam Safe is afforded the luxury of 14 senior players to choose from for the first time this season and knows his side are in for a battle today but will be confident that his side is in good form and have been getting results. But will also be aware that his side will have to play for the whole game if they are to have a chance. The officials for tonight's match are referee David Wiebe and his assistant referees Jim Bellos and Rebecca Durkow. Makula out from the back. Still going for Makula. Plays it forward. Oh, Greer intercepts. Goes early. Finds Butters. Cuts inside. Michael Butters oh, takes a bobble just before he shoots. Puts his shot well over the bar. Makula back for Radovanovic. 
goes long. Ayoji picks up the scraps. If you look to take on Nicolaides. Does. Still going Ayoji. Cuts it back. Kearns. Touch. Janowski can't get there. Reardon. Ball out from under his feet. Whoa, he's had a shot. Not much of a back lift. Looking more like a toe punt. Eccles goes long. Aikenhead wins the ball. Slaughter's touch. Let's him down. Reardon nicks in. Plays it forward. Aoji's onside. Cuts in. Rolls it past the keeper. And Nicolaides. Good defending. Clears it from the line. Let's have a look. Clulo plays it. Well-timed run. Both Kearns and Aoji. Ball out. Kearns. Fisk holds him up. Well defended, Mark Fisk. Petrie. Burn. Head up. Looking for options. Butters. Steps inside. Steps back outside. Cuts it across. No one coming in at the far post. Can head. Janoski turns away. Torsok with a run down the line. Aichi turns his man. Still going. Gets it back. Bobbles. Goes down. Penalty. Yes. Referee points to the spot. Mikhail Aichi has earned his side a penalty in the 32nd minute. Let's have a look. Let's have Slaughter gets a touch. Bobbles off his shins. Cuts inside, Fisk, a oh, little double pump. He didn't dive, he fell straight down. Fisk's reaction says it all. Penalty. Cooler. Hits it and oh, it's clipped the outside of the post. It's a golden opportunity. This could be the spark that Olympic need. Ball swung in, away. Ayochi lets it run, clever work. Clulo for Aochi. Good touch. Into space. Support coming. And Janoski's shot. Knowles, I should say. The shot. Straight at Eccles. Who gets Nicolaides underway. Greer. Butters. Greer. Inside, Crack does well. Petrie. Jumped over by Ingham. Butters across. Radovanovic. Brave down at the feet. He's just checked the offsides. I think it was spot on. Olympic. Well executed move. Clipped forward. Ayachi. Loses out. Greer inside. Petrie. Burn. Straight to Clulo. McMahon. Gives it away. Wins it back. Clulo. On the left foot. Gets it up. Shoots off that crossbar. Still not clear. OG shot. Well over the bar. McCooler. Lofts it forward. Headed down. Ingham on. Reardon does well. Clips it forward. Clulo. Knowles. McMahon. Clulo. Back for Knowles. Shoots. Puts the effort well wide of the mark. But some great lead up play there from the Wolves. Ball into the box. Aiken head forward. Off slaughter. Bobby, uh, we spoke before the game. You thought maybe um, a few goals in the first half. Hasn't been. Um, Olympic, I think, have come out very slow. And at the moment, from where I'm sitting, uh, it looks like Wolves are really the only side looking to win this game. Oh, yeah. They've, I mean, they've had the, uh, the better of the first half. Um, but in saying that, there has been a couple of glimpses of opportunities for Olympic that they haven't capitalised on. 
and uh, definitely win them. I've had two or three reasonably good chances and they haven't put them away, including the penalty. But if I if I was uh, win them, I'd be a little bit concerned because uh, looking at Olympic's bench, you know, they've got McVeigh and they've got Alex Panic. Both of them are capable of turning a game and uh, to have them in reserve to come off if it's still nil-nil midway in the first uh, second half, you know, they're two attack-minded players and um, yeah, usually, you know, what football's like, like, when them have had their opportunities, they haven't taken them. Eventually, the tide's going to turn. Yep. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. Olympic will get their 15 or 20 minutes of the game. It happens in every match. And as you say, a couple of game breakers on them, especially Alex Panic. Um, mm. Versatile. He can mm. come on in any role. I would have thought that if they're going to change it up, you might see him slip into the 10 role and sit in behind and, and do those sorts of things that he normally does. Well, I think ideally, for, from Olympic's perspective, is... You know, to get to get the best out of Michael Butters, uh, you know, Panic is an ideal uh, foil for him up front. If Panic comes off the bench fresh and he's able to to hit those pockets and hold the ball up, which he can do, he's also got a pretty sharp mind and he can pick players out. And if if Butters instead of playing up up front out and out, if he can just start playing off the like say Panic, then that could he he could get well into the game and and the two of them could cause win them some problems. Do you see either side having to adjust defensively? Um, I'm not sure that there was that much attack to really test either defence. Well, the problem, the problem again with the first half, is, as far as Olympics are concerned, is when them were in control. You know, if you've only got one one player up front uh, who's not getting the service, uh, then obviously the majority of the play is going to be in the defensive half of Olympic. You know, you've got to give Wynnum something to be concerned about, and. Uh, that half, there was nothing for Wynnum to really be concerned about because uh, you know there was too many players back behind the ball. It looked to me as if the Olympic were the away team. Uh, I would expect Dixie to change things around a little bit in this half and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Olympic have the 15-20 minutes, especially early on. A prediction for the end of the game based on the first half and what you think might happen in the second half? Well, obviously Wynnum are a good side and the position in the league suggests that. So they're certainly still well and truly capable of uh, scoring goals and hunting Olympic, but I just get a gut feeling that, you know, as I said, if Olympic can make a few little changes there and give, give Wynnum a few more headaches than what they did in that first half, I, I can see Olympic sneaking it. OK, there we have it. A, um, an Olympic victory predicted at half-time from Bobby. We'll see how that pans out in the second half, and we'll join you after the game for a wrap-up of uh, the whole match and, of course, the second half. Clulo with the corner, headed clear. Janoski cleans up. Still going, Alex Janoski. Does well, steps inside. Drives it forward and slaughter. Gets a clearance. Ball forward, Aikenhead loses out. Clulo. Straight into the arms of Eccles. McCoola. Changes direction. Rolls it forward, Knowles. First time ball for Aochi. Yanoski floats it out. Hard ball for Clulo. Gets there, does well. Gets round his man, gets it into the box, and Kearns puts it over the bar. Corners is the referee to the astonishment of the Olympic players. McMahon forward, Yanoski turns tight, clips it. Ayochi, great save! And the flag's gone up. Let's have a look, that must have been awfully tight. Yanoski plays it. We'll zoom in. Yeah, I actually half a step to a step too lot too early. Again! Crack. McMahon forward. I can head down. Knowles gives it away to Butters. Rolls it inside. Burn. Burn! Puts Olympic in the lead in the 58th minute. He's wondering what all the fuss is about. Well, the fuss is in there now in the lead. Let's have a look. 
great. Last week it was in the top corner. Tonight it's in the bottom. And a, re and a quick response from the Wolves bench with Kearns being replaced by Sasha Radulovic. Radulovic floats it into the box, straight into Eccles. Looking for options. Slowing it down, let his side get out. And the whistle's gone. We don't see this very often. I think he's been done for time. First time I've seen it in a few years. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Let's have a look. He's caught it. You've been dull to play it. Ten seconds on the clock. Radulovic comes off the defender. Across the box, Fisk away. Ball swung in. Again, Olympic clear the lines. Janoski blasts it wide. McMahon forward. Flicked on by Reardon. Ayochi, clever. Radulovic, Janoski, Clulo. Oh, and again, Olympic repel the, the Wolves attack. Corner for the visitors. Slaughter goes long. Butters does well. Aiken head. McMahon. Good pressure, Danny Byrne. Rolls it inside for Butters. Goes down. Free kick. Is it a penalty? Oh, from that reaction, I'd say no. Must have been very close. McCooler with the card. Let's have a look. Clearly inside the box. Referee's view would have been obscured somewhat by Petrie. But a clear penalty. Burn, burn! And Rod Radovanovic had no sight of that at all. Great reflexes from the Wolves keeper. Radulovic. Clulo. Back for Radulovic. Jinx steps in. Still going. Stumbles. Plays it across Aochi. Who oh, runs into a red and white wall. Clulo. Puts it into the box. And here with the defensive header. Burn. Floats it looking for slaughter. McMahon for McCooler. Ayochi first time down. Knowles, great ball. Ayochi in behind. Nicolaitis, important touch. Reardon. Corner swung into the box. Again, Olympic get ahead on it. Floated into the far post. McCool is still up there and puts it in at the far side to draw level in the 68th minute and make amends for the penalty miss earlier in the match. They've been putting heaps of pressure on and it's finally paid off. Clue low. Ayochi. Slaughter brings him down. Free kick on the edge of the box. Dangerous for Radulovic on the park. Radulovic! Free kick. Hits the side, netting the wrong side of the post. Battling in the middle of the park from the walls. Clulo. Rolls it, gets it back. Slips it through for Aochi, puts it in the bay, the flag's gone up. Let's have a look. Hard to tell from there. There we go. I think he's level. Tight call. Slaughter. Dulovic down. Janoski. For Clulo. 
Oh, Aichi's gone down. Radulovic has given Wolves the lead in the 80th minute. It's been an inspired substitution from coach Sam Safe. Let's have a look. Aichi in there. Somehow, Radulovic gets his feet and the ball in the right motion. Little back flick to himself. Plays it, head up, knows what he wants to do, executes it absolutely perfectly. Aiken head. Gives it away. The ladies on the far side. Ball into the box. Aiken head away. And it's ball! Bobbles and rolls past the post. Radovanovic. Knowles goes down. Bay still in there. Clue. Janoski. Oh, sandwich tackle. Free kick to the Wolves and a card for McVeigh. McMahon with the throw. Radulovic. Ayochi. Oh, his first touch let him go. Doesn't matter though. He's got away with it. Shoots and Eccles batters it away. Radulovic for Reardon. Hands for the corner flag. Gets a corner. Reardon straight to the corner flag. Ball rolls out. That'll be a throw to Olympic. Taken quickly. And that's the final whistle, which sees this round 11 Vito League clash end. Olympic FC 1, Wolves FC 2. Everyone expected that to be a tough tussle tonight. Um, ended up being that. Come away with two, a 2-1 two victory. Keeps you where you want to be at this stage of the season and playing good football at the same time. Yeah, we've, today, uh, it's always going to be tough here. We, we never, ever get anything. I don't think any team's got anything uh, at Olympic. But if we have a look at probably the 90 minutes, we created all the chances and missed them and hit the woodwork. And So I thought it would have deserved a 2-1 win. I'd have been very disappointed if we'd have come away with nothing. Uh, but yeah, we've come away. It's not many teams will come to Olympic and get three points and they're a good side. and. You know what I mean? They'll be in the top, top six. One of the things, uh, you did have so much possession and so much dominance in the first period. Didn't put the ball in the back of the net. The fear that I suppose the, us as pundits were having was that you weren't going to score and Olympic were going to get you on the break. Sort of happened. It sparked the side in the life and you found your goal scoring boots. Yeah, well, we've missed the penalty. We've had one off the line at the crossbar and we've gifted him their first chance. He's playing tip-tap football instead of playing into midfield or the strikers, they've pinched it, it's 1-0. First, first shot on target, first shot on target. After that, we pulled the socks up, we brought Zashid on because Blake was injured and uh, he changed little things for us. It were a different strikers they had to deal with because Sasha drops off and uh, he's come up with uh, Probably there's only him and maybe one or two others that could score a goal like that to win the game. And, uh, we won the game, so magnificent. A unique uh, situation, well, one of the unique situations uh, happened tonight. One of your substitutes sent from the bench. Um, <laughs> we're on the other side. We weren't, we weren't privy to what was said or what action was taken. Uh, can you walk us through it? Yeah, what happened was, uh, I think it was Kato had the ball in the corner and one of their guys have come straight through him and uh, he's complaining to the ref that it should be a booking. Uh, the referees don't know they're about him, so he's walked over, he's booked him, Claudio, and then Claudio being foolish, carried on chirping at the referee, so I then booked him again, and then showed him a red. So, one thing I know is uh, he, the referee's done completely right to uh, send him off, but I also think he should show some players protection when they get whacked and uh, he don't even talk to players. So a bit of uh, good stuff and a bit of not so good stuff. Well, we, uh, we're joined by um, Jim Ballas. Uh, rare occasion we have Jim on camera. Um, he's got a smirk on his face. He's happy to have a chat to us. Jim, uh, side started slowly, I thought, in the first half. Uh, Wolves 
were fairly dominant, but uh, as the game went on, it looked like you were warming to it. You nicked the goal. Everyone expected you to go on with it, and uh, at the end of the day, you got run down and uh, overtaken late in the match. Well, look, Blanche, we, we were sort of um, had a sort of a plan, you know, soak up as much as we can. All right, see what they got. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of the times that you know they've gone in at half time with a, with a goal at least. All right, so we were quite confident. You know what I mean? We come out, we score a goal. Could have been two nil. All right, I thought that penalty where I was sitting looked like it was inside the box. All right. 2-0 all over Red Rover. They pinched the goal back, the momentum cap went back with them. You know the final score. <laughs> Alex Panich starting on the bench, um, a tactical or a self-preservation move? No, no, no. Alex um, was sick all week. Yep, he wasn't at training, so butters come good, so he just played butters. I thought Alex did make a difference when he came back and when he came onto the park, as, as we would clearly expect. Where now? You, you didn't play particularly bad football, but you didn't come away with the result. What next um, for yourself and the side over the next coming weeks? Well, Blanche, um, no, we haven't played a game for two weeks. You know, Wyndham's played three, I think, in, in, in two weeks. You know, maybe we'll lack a bit of match fitness. You know, um, I'm pretty sure you know, if we played last week, we would have probably come up with, with the points. Um, you know, it's different training, different playing games, um, but we'll just go back to the drawing board and just keep on working. We, we know we've got three hard games. You know, we've got next, I think, Redlands and Rochdale and um, uh, Lions, so anything can happen. You know, we didn't play that bad, you know, so we'll see how, what happens. You said at half time that you thought Olympic could go on with this uh, if a few changes were made. Those changes were made and they did take the lead. Uh, Wolves did in the end run them down. Where do you see Dixie or the coaching staff from Olympic may have changed something differently or do you think what they did was the right thing? Well essentially they did what, they, they did what was right. I mean they, they, kept, they kept in the game. It was you know nil-nil at half time. As I said at half time you know it was going to be a game where it's always going to be tight knowing the calibre of the two teams and uh, you know they got their nose in front. Actually could have could have got to a two 0 in front, and uh, a game like that, two 0 up at home, you know, it would have been difficult for Wynnum. But you know, a credit to Wynnum, they're in the position in the league where they deserve to be. They're a good side, they're a quality side, and they're always posing a threat. But uh, the answer to your question is uh, only one thing that uh, I mean, Dixie did everything that he could as far as uh, half-time changes and so forth. But maybe Michael Burrows could have been. Could have been uh, slotted in behind and have Panic up front rather than Panic in the midfield and Butter still playing up. Michael Butter still playing up front. So that little change there, I think, maybe could have made a little bit of difference as well. What do you think the difference was between the sides in the in the roundup of it in the final wash-up? What do you think the difference between the two sides was on the night? Belief, you know. As I say, Wynnum's Wynnum's a, a, a good side. The, the the look as though they're a team that's got. Uh, confidence in one another, things are going well for them, and uh, I think that was the difference in the end. You know, uh, Olympic, you know, normally the Olympic of old, or up until this point in time, you know, would would go for it, go for it, no matter who they were playing at home. They were a little bit more cagey, and in the end, uh, it could have paid off for them, but it didn't. You know, when them scored a quality second goal, uh, they're good enough to to hold that lead to the end. OK, well, thank you, Bobby. I'd like to thank you for being um, on the show tonight. It's been a pleasure, and um, I've learnt some things about football in the last couple of hours. So join us next Friday night when the cameras will be out at Toralba Park for the Premier Division 1 clash between Mitchelton FC and Logan Lightning. <laughs>